Talking with the experts. Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. My name is Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com and today my guest is Christine Sharkey from Quote Convert. And Christine is passionate about helping businesses to grow and to give their clients and potential clients an excellent customer experience. And I will let Christine tell you a little bit more about her business. Welcome Christine and thank you for joining me today. Oh, thanks, Rose. It's really a delight to be here with you. I, I thank you for the opportunity. Um, Quote Convert was born from a realisation of experience from our business as a security firm offering um, alarms and CCTV and things like that. And I was the person who created the leads, um, followed up, sent the quotes out, uh, followed up the quotes at, and those kinds of things. And Quite often, my husband would ask people afterwards, why did they go with us? And they would say, many of them would say, because you're the only one who followed us up. And I went, really? So when uh, my husband decided to slow down, I thought this was a golden opportunity to actually um, help businesses that don't follow up to follow up. Uh, lots of reasons for that. I mean, there's a quote that says the money is in the follow up. And it most certainly is. And we've had that experience here when we've had people quote for us. And then, as I said, we've had a lot of experience with that kind of thing in the security industry. And it's across the board. It doesn't matter where it is. I've been to many places where they just don't follow up or they, and it's not even, a, you know, it's not that they don't like doing it necessarily or even that they don't think it has value, but they often just don't have time. It's one of the most time-consuming, disruptive jobs in a business because it, you can't just allot an hour or two hours or a morning to do it because people don't answer their phone. They certainly don't ring you back. So you actually have to ring them again on another day or another hour. And you're in the middle of other things and don't want to stop because you lose the flow that you have in your workplace. So that's why I started Quote Convert because I thought people would love to have somebody to do that for them and represent their company in a really professional way and give their potential customers such an excellent service that they would want to go with that company. Wow, that's really innovative. I had not heard of any businesses or anyone doing that before. It's, um, yeah, it's a first, yeah, and a wonderful idea for business owners. I think it's terrific. Well done for thinking of it. <laughs> so well, tell me. I love to do. So I love talking with people. So for me, it's just a great thing to be able to do. Uh, it's a no-brainer, you reckon? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. tell me, um, why is it important to follow up with your clients? If you've provided a quote to somebody uh, and they haven't, say, returned your quote, call to say, you know, or entered, um, you know, your queries about the quote, why is it important to follow up? Let me tell you a story. We had three businesses come and quote for us for a patio. We never heard from two of them ever again. So I don't even know what the names of those companies are. If I did, I might tell people don't bother with them because their service is so lousy. Um, but the one who stayed with us stayed with us through a lengthy process. I mean, building a patio and, and all those things, they're quite expensive items. You don't just make a decision as soon as they walk in the door or walk out of the door. And we had a number of things where we went, oh, we need to change this or what if we did that? And so this guy stayed with us through the whole process. And what he didn't know, he went and found out and came back to us. And it was probably, I don't know, two, three months um, from when he first came. Now, if he hadn't done that, we probably wouldn't have given him the work. Yep, makes sense. So, yeah, so I guess the follow-up is either you get the work or you don't get the work. And, you know, if, if someone's provided a quote, yeah, you, they should at least ring back and say, well, have you gotten the quote? Have you, are you happy with it? Is there something that we can do? about that a lot, there's a lot more skill to it than that though rose um i mean there are there are companies out there who do ring and say did you get the quote but that's where they leave it they just uh, leave it in well if you want to use us ring us back 
You know, I mean, what sort of service is that? That's yeah. not service. How, how do you increase your sales? Which is like, you know, my, my, my tagline is queen of follow-up, building relationships and increasing sales 10 to 20%. How do you build a relationship in one phone call? How do you increase your sales by getting more of those quotes turned around for you in one phone call? You can't. It's, it just doesn't work like that. No, right. Even, like we all know, having been through COVID and, you know, particularly people in Victoria, they're probably the worst hit with it all. And the relationships, but even for all of the eastern states as well, relationships became such an important factor in, in being able to get through this time of isolation. Um, and, and that's just a very dramatic um, ex, um, example of a small thing like what we do, and that is to keep that relationship going, keep care, because people sometimes make they want to get something done and it might cost them 15 20 30,000 5,000 even it might be a lot of money for some people um and they start the process and then uh suddenly the car dies and all of a sudden that job that is going to be five or ten thousand dollars has to be put on the side while they replace the car because that's a higher priority but it doesn't mean they don't want the job done it just means there has to be a delay now, if you're not following up and building that relationship with them, then you don't know that. And therefore, you can't program to ring them in three or six months time when there's going to be more money available. And therefore, you just lose it. You just lose it. Okay. So um, explain then how the process actually works. Uh, so how, how do you do the follow-up for other businesses? So if, if, say, if someone was going to do um, a follow-up with another business, how, what are the steps that they would have to go through to make that process um, convert to an actual paying client? One of the first things that we like to do with a business is to have a look at the procedure they've got in place at the time. Lots and lots of businesses don't have mm -hmm. procedures at all. Um, some of them have very loose ones. And if they were to sit somebody new down in front of what they, they've got written, it may well be that that person would be totally lost because not every step is included. So what we like to do is have a look at where the lead comes in and where the sale takes place and then have a, um, just assess the whole thing, evaluate it, find the gaps, the holes, the, the things that are not working properly, um, restructure it um, and test it out and then present them with a written procedure um, so that they've actually got something they can use for themselves in their business and for training if they would like to do that. Um, once that's happened, then they can either train their own people with that or we can help train their own people or they can get us to do the calls. So with the calls, we, we do phone calls. We don't do, we, we do the occasional text if it's necessary after some phone calls, but we don't automate anything. We're not, um, we're a real service. We're a people to people service. And we're, um, we're a service that wants a, to help a business grow. I mean, I can think of nothing more exciting than to have a, um, a client say to, and this happened to me recently, um, a client said to me, we have to restructure. Interestingly, they said it's got nothing to do with what you've done. Like they're trying to say to me, you haven't done anything wrong. Mm -hmm. But it actually had everything to do with what we'd done because they had to stop paying us so that they had money now. Because they got to such a good place, they now had to restructure and then put on a, a, a new salesperson so that they could double their workload, but they couldn't afford that immediately as well as me. So we're going to work together again in the future, but for now they've got, they've got to a great place where they can actually start to grow more. And then when that settles a bit, then they want to grow some more, then we'll do some more work for them. And that to me is the most exciting thing. Just, it's just such a reward to know that you've helped um, a small business grow. Yeah, so um, I guess if, if um I guess what I'm trying to get at is not necessarily how you do the, um, the business, okay. but what um, a business as a, they could do um, if they're not using like your service, but how they could actually do it themselves. 
what would be the process that they should put in place to, you know, get um, from the quote to the conversion and the, and the sale at, at, at the end. So using, right. using what you do, using the process that you do, right. what would be the process that they should follow perhaps? Ring the people. I mean, you, you need a CRM or some way to task um, the call so that you know when you have to ring people. Uh, use your CRM or your uh, database or whatever people have to know when to ring people. So uh, you know, ring them back and find out what their concerns are. Ring them back and, um, I mean, you have to quite often just wait they may not have all their quotes in so now you have to ring them back again really the process is continuing to ring them back um when i when i was ringing a, a business a guy a coach that he was wanting to see how he could use my services and um it got to the point where he didn't he didn't often he didn't answer his phone and so it got to the point where i just said to him when i left message I was like, oh, it's your stalker here and that's very tongue in cheek, but it's a little bit like that. It's that you have to be persistent and you, you need to, to want the work, I think, um, and, to be, and to have the kind of um, approach where people don't feel as though you're hassling them, but that you're caring for them and that you're concerned yeah. about, you know, are they okay? Are they doing all right? Um, you're just wanting to give them really good customer service and a great customer experience. And I, I don't know how else to explain yep. to anybody <laughs> else than keep ringing them, keep talking to them. That's perfect. Um, yeah. Absolutely perfect. And um, so once they've got the sale, um, so what would they be doing um, past that, obviously, other than doing the work? So what, what would be, you know, the, the process or that they, that they should be following once they've received the sale? Well, what, once they've, well, obviously, once they've done the job, it's probably, probably more about where I would have some expertise and some experience. Um, and that would be in ringing afterwards. Um, it, it, it does depend a little bit if, it's the, if the owner is the person who does the job yep. then he knows how it's left. But if you have tradies working for you or subcontractors or anybody like that, um, you need to be ring. I think, you need to be ringing uh, that client after the job is done and make sure, did they take the rubbish away? Did they leave your carpets clean? Um, you know, did they leave you know, grease marks in your bathroom after they washed their hands and things like that? Or we, was the job done to the standard that that business would like to have or does have? Um, and that way, if there is anything at all that is, has gone wrong, um, you can circumnavigate the, the situation and actually correct it or apologise for it or do whatever's necessary. So that afterwards, instead of those people going to their neighbours and going, oh, my God, it's terrible, they did this, they did that, because that's exactly what people do they will actually be able to go, they did these things, but they fixed it. And I don't know about you, Rose, but I've had that happen to me. Yeah. Where, you know, they, they haven't done the job to a standard that I think was acceptable. And they never bothered to ask me. And so they don't know that I've never used them again. No, and they've left a mess. They've left a mess in my in whatever place that they've been doing, whether it was plaster dust or sawdust or something. You know, they haven't cleaned up after themselves, and you know, it's a job for me to do, and I shouldn't have had to be doing that job because it's not how they found it. They should leave yeah. it the way they found it. Exactly, or better. Is yes, exactly. Is if you leave it even better. I mean, that way you get great feedback by having that communication. And, you know, it's really hard to, to make that call sometimes if you're a bit worried because you kind of don't want to take on board the, the wrath of somebody who's not happy. But that person's going to be much softer in their approach to you um, when they know that you've rung them to find out and that because you care. Um, yeah. 
mm. you have a high standard. And that way then, once that's all settled and sorted, then you can go for a review and get a great review. Yeah, no, I reckon that's um, a great plan. Yeah. In any business. I mean, even if you, I mean, I'm, this is not just for um, trade type businesses, but even if you, you know, like a service-based business, if you're an admin business or, a, you know, a VA or a, a, whatever type of business you that you're running, um, I think it's always good to have a follow-up with, with the client to see if they're happy with what, you know, you provided. So if you're a speaker, you know, and, you know, you've provided a workshop, you know, you, you should ask. You should ask the, 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 you know, the person who booked you, were they happy with the workshop? You know, have you heard any feedback from the people who attended? And mm. I think that's great. That, you yeah. Know, it's, it's great advice. I think everyone should be doing it. Absolutely. But it, as I said before, you know, it is so time consuming um, and it is difficult to do because if you're the, if it's your business and your quote is out there, you, you're kind of invested in the yes or no and don't want to hear the no. Um, or actually, some people just don't have the skill or they don't like, some people don't like getting on the phone. I mean, I find that weird, but because I yeah, love getting yeah. on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> but I get it that some people just are terrified of whole, the whole idea. Um, but how does a business grow? How do you increase your sales 10 to 20%? How do you go to that next step um, without, how do, you, how do you build relationships even? I have um, a, a couple of, there's a couple of industries that are starting to warm to what I do as well. Not so much because they do quotes, but because they are in an industry that is not known for caring for its clients. And so we'll be starting work soonish, um, one in the financial planning industry and one in the mortgage industry, where we're going to start making calls um, to nurture the clients that they've already got. Um, and in mortgages, then you know there's lots of different ways that you can help those clients. They may not have known there's been a change or realised that the change in the interest rate could be useful to them, that they would be able to perhaps take advantage of that. And also the insurance industry, um, following up on the clients they've got to make sure that they're cared for. And then often there's an opportunity there to upsell. So you know, there's other, other places. It's not just the quotes that can be that, where you can build relationships and provide excellent customer service. Absolutely. Absolutely. So have you ever thought about running a training course on, on um, this type of a thing, on what you do? Yeah, it is something that's in my mind to do. Um, at the moment, my business is still reasonably young and uh, there's, I, I think, um, I'm open to suggestions always, but at the moment in my thinking, it's that I need to build this up to a better place uh, first. Mm -hmm. um, and... In doing that, I'll be able to probably more accurately put together training So, because I'm experiencing it yeah. in that situation. I know I did it in our security firm, but that's different to only one firm and it's we had our way of doing it. But when once I've experienced a number of them, I think I'll be able to put a better yeah. thing together for people. Yeah, I was just, just curious to know if you had something in place. Um, I think... A lot of uh, people would benefit from that training. Uh, you know, a lot of businesses would benefit from the training uh, on the follow-up. You know, to um, to better their businesses and um, yeah, it's and get and get clients. Yeah, it's certainly something that I I need to consider. Probably now you've brought it up again for me. It's uh, been in the back of my mind a little bit, but um, I'll have to now ponder it a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> might, I mean, might, be, um, might be synergy there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing. I love synergy because you get so much more out of two than you get out of one plus one. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um, so what any, if, what, if any, wise words have you got to any businesses out there who um, maybe not using the follow-up process to the best of their advantage? Uh, 
Um, if, they're, if they're doing their follow-ups but not doing them to the best, not finding the best way to do them, I'd certainly be more than happy to have a conversation with them. Um, if I can help them tweak a little bit just by a conversation, I'm always happy to help. I, I am a giver by nature, so um, I don't hide my bushel. My, my light under a bushel and say it's mine and you can't have it unless you pay for it or anything like that. I, I am, I think, a fairly generous person. So um, I would be happy to have a conversation with anybody. And even if all we did was put together the, the, the package where we look at there from the lead to the sale and make sure that's really clear and really concise um, and then they've got something useful to train with, Mm -hmm. um, if that's what the way they would like to go, um, or and once we have that, we can certainly come in and help train their people in in the process. Um, but I think you know the the wisdom I think is that the money is in the follow up. That is, it's almost a no brainer really. Yeah. That, yeah. that if you don't do that, your chances of winning the work are reduced significantly. And why would you do that? Quoting takes so much time. I mean, the generation of the leads costs money um, and we can help too if they get inundated with warm leads. We can always um, make calls for them, follow those up, get them actually in the early stages, not leaving them two weeks before somebody gets back to them and things like that, because that's not good customer experience. Um, and, um, you know, we can help them to get that process in place so that then they can do it for themselves. And so we can train them in that as well if they'd like to do that. Um, but, yeah, there has to be a follow-up. There's just, you can't grow if you don't follow up, really. I'm, sh I'm absolutely convinced of that. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty, um, pretty good advice there, Christine. Thank you so much for today. It's... Uh, been enlightening and I'm sure many business owners will um, come to you now and get to get all the, all the good oil on, on the follow-up and what they should be doing if they're not doing it correctly. So I think you've um, you've given them some some food for thought there. Oh thanks Rose it's just been great um, it's, I'm just so I just love the subject so much I just too, I'm just so passionate about giving people great experiences and nurturing people, making sure they know they're taking care of, that people care. You're not just a number in a book somewhere, but you actually, this company cares about you and they really want to work with you. It's just such a great thing. It's such it is. Yep. It is. It's, it's, uh, it, shows, it shows your humanity, I think. Yeah, I think that's the thing, isn't it? You know, if we don't care for people, what, what else is... I, I was actually looking, before I came a couple of days ago, I was, thought, hmm, wonder what my values are that I wrote down two years ago. Um, and the first one was, and I was a bit surprised because I, I actually couldn't remember what I'd written down. But the first one was, people are more important than anything. They are. And, and that's, that's, I guess, the bottom line for us. Yeah. yeah for carers, people who care are, I think, going to rule the world one day. <laughs> All right, Christine, thank you so much for your time today. And uh, it's been a lovely chatting to you. And um, I hope I'll be able to chat to you again soon. Thanks a lot, Rose. Really appreciate it. Okay, bye. Bye.